Good evening, folks, and welcome back to USCAA.com for another final matchup. Ricky Sobrano here alongside Jason Collins as we get set for the women's Division II final matchup between Central Maine Community College, the Mustangs, coming at 32-1, and one, winners of 17 straight and the number one seed in the bracket at Penn State University, Lehigh Valley, the number two seed. So it came out the way we expected, I suppose, one versus two. They come in at 21 and three. So this will be an interesting one to take a look at in, in the respect that we have a team that has a lot of depth and plays a lot of players yep. in Central Maine yes. versus a team in Lehigh Valley that they really only go seven, maybe eight deep. Yes, and you, but you also have the player of the year with Penn State Lehigh Valley, Andrea Watkins, number 22. She's going to have to be a very big player in this game. It's going to be interesting to see how the Central Maine Mustangs match up with her. Yeah, it will be definitely Central Maine in addition to the depth advantage, they yeah. also have a, a pretty significant size advantage. They've got, counting it up right now, Schlim, who's six feet tall, Moore's 5'11", and a couple other six-footers that they can bring off the bench if the moment dictates, whereas conversely, Penn State Lehigh Valley, their tallest player is Ebony Sanders at 5'11", and everybody else tops off at 5'9 after that. I'll ask you to pause and stay with us as we get set for the National Anthem. Just a few moments away from the tip in the third final of the day in the women's Division II bracket between a Central Maine Community College and Penn State Lehigh Valley. The introductions beginning now, so let's take a look at the starting lineup for the lower seed, the number two seed, Penn State Lehigh Valley Lions. Number 14, Hannah Banks. She is a junior, guard slash forward. Number 20, Ebony Sanders. She is a freshman forward, number 22, Andrea Watkins. She is a 5'7 junior. Number 32, Ashley Gordon. She is a freshman guard slash forward. And number 31, Gia Erie. She is a 5'9 sophomore. Penn State, they are in the blue unis with white trim and white numbers. They're finishing up the introductions now. Looks like Central Maine will be in white, judging by their shorts. They don't have their tops off just yet. Yeah, actually, I do see the starters sitting on a bench now. They'll yep. be in white. I think they're all in a color 
is red. The coach is actually there in red, too, so that's a, a cute little touch there. The head coach, Andrew Morong, he's in a red blazer and one of the assistants in a red dress as well. So let's look at their starters. We'll start in the backcourt with number one, Nicole Hamblin, 5'8 sophomore guard out of Fayette, Maine, leads the team in assists per game. We're tied for the lead, at least, in assists per game at 3.4. She'll be joined in the backcourt by 5'4 freshman, number 11, Christina Belay, out of Lewiston, Maine, averages just over five points per game. Three guard lineup, but the third guard is a six footer. That's Jenny Schlimm, number 10, sophomore out of Nottingham, New Hampshire. Averages just under 10 points per game. Had a double double in the semifinal win over Southern Maine, 13 11, and shipped in five assists as well. In the front court, it's Brooke Reynolds, number 12, first team All American selection, 5'9 sophomore forward out of Poland, Maine. Leads the team in points, steals, and blocks. And in the middle, it's the big girl, number 55. Carolina Gethers Harrison, 5'11 sophomore out of Auburn, Maine, averages an even 10 boards per game. Just moments away from the tip between Central Maine and Lehigh Valley. Lehigh Valley led by Lori Khalil in her third season. They were 7 and 18 the year before she took over, so that was a quick turnaround there. And Andrew Morong, sixth season and the coach of the year. In the USC Women's Division, USC AA, Women's Division II bracket, he leads Central Maine. The tip's about to start. So there are two teams out there now. Yep. It'll be Schlimm and Sanders doing the honors. And Over to the far side of the court, and Watkins comes away with it. Looks like Central Maine is going to run man to man. They're not in a zone. Into the corner, it's Banks. Get past Gordon. Full pass inside, Sanders. Back to her cut for Erie, but a travel. So first possession of the game is a turnover. And it goes back to Central Maine in the white with the red trim on the top. Penn State Lehigh Valley Lions come out right away with a 2-3 zone. That's what they did last night as well. Gathers Harrison can't finish inside, but the putback is good, and the first points of the game. Yeah, and that's something that we're going to have to watch as this game goes along, because Cent Central Maine Mustangs have more height. See if they can out-rebound. More height and girth as Watkins answers on the other end. To all, not quite a minute into the game. Amblin doubled on the far side. Ball goes through her legs out of bounds, but it's off of Gordon. They're running, a, they're running a unique 2-3 zone. They're trapping when the player is in the corner, which you don't see a lot. So a zone where they'll pressure when the situation arises and they force a turnover yep. right there. That was good pressure. Here comes Banks, lobs it up ahead for Watkins. But Central Maine got back, picks up her dribble looking for help, and she gets it for Gordon. Skip past Banks, she's a sniper from deep inside Sanders. Back for Watkins, pass was low, so she couldn't get it up. Now lost it, yep. loose on the deck. Central Maine comes away with it. Good and hustle, good hustle. And here they come with Blay. Blay crosses over, lost the ball out of bounds, and it will stay. She tried to use a hesitation to beat the beat uh, number 32 to the basket, but she didn't work. Reynolds came up with the steal initially to send them out on the break. It's Schlimm, 18 on the shot clock. Now Belay holds the ball over her head. Hamblin running the point. Back for Belay. Inside Reynolds goes up and finishes. Yep, that's that's a very key way to beat the 2-3 zone. Is by attacking it and passing it into it. The Mustangs are running a little press coming up the court. Just about two minutes into this one. Watkins a three. Banks it in off less. I guess that was the right angle for the bank, so it went in. <laughs> I don't know if she meant to do it, but she'll take it in either event. <laughs> it worked out well. Lehigh with an early lead. It's Schlimm. Now Hamblin. Reynolds with it again. Kicks for an open three on the wing. Got it. Good answer from Christina Blay. So two teams shooting well early. It's been a hot start. Yep. Most of the finals so far haven't been very good offensively. That tip has tipped and stolen. Gethers Harrison gets it to Hamblin. Hamblin up ahead. Gethers Harrison can't 
finish. Ball fell out of her hands. Rebound for Erie. It looks like they're only going to press out of the inbound. They're not going to press bringing up the court off of that rebound. Here comes Gordon, nearly tied up, lost it, got it to Erie on the floor. That and was she'll a take really a good dive. Yeah. She was in a prone position there, so she burned the timeout rather yep. than risk the turnover. It was a smart basketball play. 7.13 to go in the opening quarter. Central Maine on top, 7-5 on top of Penn State University Lehigh Valley early on. And we'll go to a media timeout too, the first whistle of the ball game. A sponsored announcement at your NUSCAA National Championship game. Nemec Cullen Woodlands Resort is the presenting sponsor of the 2017 USCAA Basketball National Championship. Nemec Cullen is a family and luxury vacation destination on 2,000 woodland acres in Laurel Highlands of southwestern Pennsylvania. From luxurious Forbes five-star AAA five-diamond falling rock boutique hotel to the comfort of your RV, Nemecolon's six lodging options cater every, to everyone's personal choice with a variety of amenities. It's another season at Nemecolon Woodlands Resort. What's your reason? What reason will bring you back? Keith Sobrano and Jason Collins back here on USCAA.com. Out of the media timeout at Central Maine. On uh, top of PSU Lehigh Valley, 7.13 to go. In the opening quarter in this Women's Division II final, in the 2017 USCAA Basketball National Championship. Watkins the inbound, lobs it for Erie. Nice over the shoulder catch there. Watkins, the conference player of the year, looking to trap her, nearly stripped from behind, but she gets it for Sanders. That Backdoor cut. Watkins rejected inside. She made a really good cut, though. But Reynolds got her hand on it. Schlimm cut off. Crosses over, nice move, 16 feet away, and she hands it from the baseline. Schlin is looking very good from the start. She's very good at creating off the dribble and getting a good look, and she has a good shooting form, so she might be a good player to watch out for today. Yeah, Schlin is the second leading scorer on the Central Maine team. Central Maine, they lead the USCAA D2 in points per game at just over 80, but they only have one player who averages double figures because they generally win by so much. Their starters don't lock heavy minutes. And that's another good example of them just being a very good overall team too. It's a deep team. Yeri at open look, too short from three. That's the right shot, that was a very open look. Reynolds with the board for Central Maine, and here comes Schlimm again, skip pass into the corner. Hamblin, right back. For Schlimm, too short. Long rebound, Hamblin corrals in the corner. And it's a fresh 30 for Central Maine. Reynolds attacking. Dangerous pass into the middle off the hands of Gethers Harrison. And here comes Lehigh Valley. On the run, Banks lost the, she ball, lost the ball, tried to save it. She, she should have taken the shot. There you go. And now she will. Too strong in and out. Rebound for Gethers Harrison. Skip pass up ahead. It's Schlimm on the run. Attacks, cut off, trapped. And let's see the call. We'll go against Lehigh Valley and Gordon. It'll be interesting to see if they stick with that zone. It looks like Central Maine has shooters, and that's definitely the way, an easy way to beat a 2-3 zone. Riley Moore will check in as Gethers Harrison, Central Maine's leading rebounder, will sit. Moore, 5'11", freshman forward, but not as girthy as Gethers Harrison as Sanders rejects Hamblin inside. That was a very good block by Sanders. 5.45 to go in the first quarter. They'll post up Sanders for the first time today. Back out for Watkins. She saves the bad pass, goes inside, can't finish. Sanders keeps it alive. Erie gets the roll. And Lehigh Valley with their first second chance points of the game. It's a two point game. Watkins had a beautiful Euro step into the lane. Watkins a very dynamic, crafty player. Hamblin an open look. Too short from deep. Rebound for Erie and Lehigh Valley. Lehigh Valley is doing a good job of pushing the ball up the court, even though there was just a turnover. And that's Gordon who lost. Hamblin played her aggressively all the way up the court, yeah. and then she pulled her down, and that's Gordon's, or Gordon's second foul. So that's something to watch. Yeah. Again, Lehigh Valley not really with the type of depth to sustain a loss if they get into foul trouble. And Gordon will stay in even with two fouls. Yep. 
Triana Harriman, number 13, checks in for the first time today for Central Maine, 5'6 freshman guard. Schlem in the corner for Belay. Nice tip pass by number 14. Harriman saves it though, Reynolds at the free throw line. Schlem, extra pass, a three on the way, off to the left. Belay missed it. Rebound for PSU, Watkins up ahead of the pack, but there were two Central Maine defenders back and she was stripped. Here comes Belay on the run from the elbow. Look it. So off a turnover. Here comes a press. And Central Maine will look to press again. Four point game, 4.30 to go in the opening quarter. Sanders, right block, goes inside. Can't finish off the window. Keeps it alive. Does Sanders, it's loose. And Gordon Good put back. finishes. All set up by Sanders though, who was battling two Central Maine players and nearly came away with the ball anyway. I'm impressed that they're rebounding the ball so well this early. Into the corner, it's Moore, Ooh. and she was fouled. Let's see, how many fouls is she? That's her first foul. Yep. Yeah, Erie, that's just their first. It's Gordon, who already has two. Yes. So that's the one that Penn State needs to watch. Yep. She's actually arguing with the official right now. Yeah, there have been a lot of coaches and a lot of players that have not been happy with the officiating this tournament. Probably Moore at the line for two. She hits the first. It looks like they're about to bring out Gordon right now. Yep, they're bringing yeah, Gordon out Gordon. Sit. Taylor's coming in the game right now. Maiza Taylor, number three, 5'2 freshman. So she'll give up height yep. to everybody else on the court, but she is very quick. And that might be good, too, to break the press, because if she's so quick, she might be able to run around it a little bit. Sevi Deary Dirac. And there she goes. Number two is in the game now as well. For Central Maine, oh, and yeah. right on cue, there yeah. is Taylor, coast to coast. Yeah. That quickness makes a difference. Two point game under four to play in the opening quarter. Here's Harrington, or Harriman rather. Three on the way in the corner, two short for Central Maine and Hamblin, but they get a fresh 30. Bolt pass inside, tipped and stolen by uh, Sanders, had it knocked out of her hands from behind, but a foul. I'm very impressed by how well, after the loose ball, Penn State, Lehigh Valley. The Mustangs got the ball, and then they set really quickly back into that 2-3 zone. It's a very good job. You can tell they are well coached on this 2-3 zone. Oh, well, you don't get the 32-1 and one unless you're well coached, <laughs> generally speaking. <laughs> Here's Erie, 85 feet from her own hoop, and this time Central Maine will back off. Yeah. Watkins trots it across the timeline, turns the corner, nearly lost the ball, and will kick back out. Four banks, Taylor attacking, rejected yeah. from behind yeah. by Deary Deraps. That's the one bad thing about being 5-2. Yes, she gave up a little bit of height in that matchup right there. Now Reynolds will sit. It looks as if. Might have been a warning just issued there. Couldn't hear all of it. Yeah, I couldn't hear all of it either. Sanders in the post, goes up with the right, missed the bunny, gets it back, and she was tied up. Jump ball, possession arrow for Central Maine. Sanders seems like she has good moves in the post. I hope she doesn't lose her confidence because she's getting good looks. But she had a monster game the other night. Has two double doubles in this tournament. 3.05 to go in the quarter. They tried to run a backdoor cut to Elena, and it didn't work, but it was the right idea. Schlim lost the ball for Central Maine that time. Watkins. Great play by Watkins one getting on open one. in transition. Hit the side of the backboard, got it back, goes back up, misses again. And Heathers Harrison comes away with the board. She's looking a little gassed already. I think she lost her glasses, that was why. She actually just came back in after okay. sitting for a bit. Wow. They're they're pressing out of the 2-3 zone. They're coming up. It's very very unique to see this on the 2-3 zone. And they're forcing them baseline. See how long they can keep it up with essentially seven players as Watkins forces a turnover. Here she comes on the run, nearly stripped at half court. It's out of bounds and it goes to Central Maine. That was Deary Deraps who stepped in front of her. Watkins doing a lot of dribbling at the timeline and it's a turnover going the other way. Yeah, you can't dribble that much when you're running the press. You gotta pass around it. Araman too short. Tried to make Banks play for jumping the passing lane. Watkins up ahead for Good Banks. Pass. One on one. 
Attacks the rim and gets it to go high off glass. Gethers Harris that instead of going for the block, she tried yeah. to draw the charge. That's the second time she's done that when she's been back there alone, which, I mean, you don't want your big to get in foul trouble. She's just making the right move. Backdoor cut there. Tipped right back to Gethers Harris. Then here's a three. Deary Durapps too strong. Rebound for Banks, and here comes Taylor. Sanders showed very active hands on the defensive end. There was an open pass, and but she read it, and she's doing a very good job holding the center of that 2-3 zone. She was a tremendous interior presence last night against Villa Maria University, where she nearly had a triple-double, finished three blocks shy of it. <laughs> really, I thought she, she was credited with seven blocks. I thought it could have been more, to be honest. 150 to go. In the opening quarter, tie ball game. Watkins rejected, gets it back. Kicks for Sanders from 12, no good. Barely grazed the back iron. And then a foul, Taylor crashes to the deck with Blake. If Taylor would have had her feet set, she could have gotten the charge. But not that time. No. It looks like they have Hamlin against Watkins when they're on defense. The matchup to watch as the game progresses. Here's Schlimm, back for Hamblin. Swing it back around the perimeter. Deary Draps holes, they're looking to come with a double. Schlimm in the corner, dribbles out of it. Whoa. Hop step inside, but came up short with the right hand. Beautiful move though. Schlimm has a very good skill set. She's got a couple good moves around the basket and ways to get open. She absolutely does. Erie stepped out of bounds on the rebound, so it stays with Central Maine, and Gethers Harrison will sit again. Wide open off the inbound, Deary Durapps fires, you got can't. it. You can't let somebody get that wide open off the inbound. Just a miscommunication there, nobody went with her. They gotta move the ball up the court, the press is getting to them, There's, they got four seconds left, they, they got a pass. And here comes Watkins. Kicks for Banks in the corner. Under a minute to play now in the opening quarter. Three-point game. Central Maine, the top seed on top. Watkins goes right around to Sanders' screen. Picks up her dribble. Finds Banks. Eight on the clock. Back for Sanders. Watkins they double open. her. Watkins. She's got to hit this one. Too strong. Not that time. Long rebound. Corralled by Schlim, who was bumped. Yeah. It looks like Erie went a little out of control uh, into the into the try to get the free ball because of because Schlim had position over her, and that's her second foul. And this Penn State team cannot get in foul trouble right now. Yeah, and Gordon is already on the bench with two, so yeah. I mean, just looking, an issue. At, just looking at the bench, they only have three people yeah. on the bench. They only have eight <laughs> total. So when we say they go eight deep, that's not an exaggeration. That really is as far as they go. So Schlim at the line now for two because that's the fifth foul. Mm. It's the first. So now Erie will sit to try to prevent any further trouble. Carice Swarren, number 23, 5'8 junior forward. We'll see her first action of the evening now. Schlim's second, good as well. Five point game, 42.3 to go in the opening quarter and Central Maine setting up their press. And something very quickly that you can see with Mustang's depths, they are really turning out people and replacing people, which is Not helping stop, their yeah. press because they have fresher legs. And right now the pace, this has been a high pace first quarter. We'll see if Penn State can keep that up. We know Central Maine can because they have yeah. the depth. Here. Here's Watkins, forces it up, air ball, Sanders, or make that Soreen, no good on the follow, has it back, third try. And it'll be a foul. Yeah. That's honestly a, th a reason why I think Penn State is running the 2-3 zone is because on defense you don't have to try as hard when you're running that zone. So that's a, way, a good way to keep their legs more fresh as the game goes along. Yeah, most teams that are shorthanded do, as you said, as Soreen comes up short on the first, tend to, to play a zone for that exact reason. Yeah. You don't have to follow somebody around the yes. court. Yes, yes. Soreen's second rattles home. Four-point game, 27.1 to go in the opening quarter. This could be the final possession of the opening quarter if Central Maine elects to play it that way. The shot clock is turned off. I wouldn't be surprised if they shoot. They are shooting it before the shot clock goes off. And they did on cue. It's Riley Moore. Yeah. Six-point game, 10 on the clock. So now they can set up a trap again. Sanders yes. Watkins. for Watkins. Yep. Five on the clock. She's she got to take space. the shot. 
Banks, open look, rejected as closing out hard was Reynolds, and that is how the opening quarter will end with Central Maine on top 22-14 at the end of one. The number one seed Mustangs on top of the number two seed Lehigh Valley Lions. Fine Designs is the official merchandiser of the national championships. They provide an outstanding selection of apparel that is fully customizable. Don't miss out on the memory of the 2017 Basketball National Championships. To purchase your official 2017 USCAA Basketball Championship merchandise from Fine Designs, visit their booth in the lobby of the main arena. Ricky Soprano and Jason Collins here on USCAA.com as we get set for the start of the second quarter of this Women's Division II Final in the 2017 USCAA Basketball National Championships. 20 to 14, Central Maine on top. Central Maine the top seed on top of the number two seed. Penn State University, Lehigh Valley. A couple quick numbers from the first quarter. PSU shot just six of 21 and turned it over seven times. Central Maine seven of 17 and turned it over five times, so. High pace, a lot of turnovers early on, but it's been engaging to watch at least. Yeah, but you can't make seven turnovers in a quarter and expect mm -hmm. to win. That's nope. not winning basketball. That's on pace for 28, which is obviously <laughs> no. way too much here. Sanders gets it to go. Honestly, I think Sanders can really be an X factor in this game. I don't see many people on Lehigh that can match up with her. She has really good touch inside. She's been one of their better players in the tournament, will likely be on the all-tournament team. Quick ball movement here, Hamblin wide open, got it. 23 to 17, seven point game, largest lead of the game. For Central Maine, 9 22 to go. In the opening half, here's Taylor. She'll slow it down, finds a cutting Sanders inside. That's a travel, or a uh, beg your pardon, charge. charge. Yeah. That was a really good play by Central Maine's number 12, it's Brooke Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, she did a great job setting her feet, knowing that Sanders was coming down the lane. Here comes Blay working on Taylor, Hamlin. They look to trap her, now they back off. Hamlin gives up her dribble, gets yeah, Hamlin, back out. Hamlin's hit a three just now, so you can't, and it looked good, you can't let her get another open shot. Hamlin again, quick ball movement, Reynolds on the baseline, up top, Deary directs to short, tipped by Soreen, and then she corrals it in the lane. They're and running a little bit of a press even off the rebound, which is new this quarter. Deep three, Banks too strong, high rebound for Reynolds. Yeah, that was a bad shot. You can't take a deep three that far, far, that far out. Banks has some range, but that time yeah. a little bit over ambitious, and here's a foul on Watkins. And that's one player you can't have get in foul trouble. The player of the year. It's only her first, but already two in this quarter on Lehigh Valley. Hamblin. PSU in that zone. Open look for Deary to wraps, but she elects not to take it. Has it back. Now she will try her luck. Two short rims out. Rebound for Sanders. Good. Tries to outlet quickly for Watkins, but it's swatted out of bounds by Sevy Deary to wraps. The Penn State has to find a way to slow down the tempo. They're paying, they're playing the Mustangs game, and they're not going to win if they play at their pace. Early on, both teams were running, but you're right. When you only have eight players, that's not a long-term solution. Gordon back in the game. She has the two fouls, so she sat at the end of the first. Here's Watkins knifing her way inside, gets it to go off the window. That is a nice Euro step. That, is, that was a great job getting in the lane. Under eight to play in the opening half. It's Hamblin holding, fires a three, got it. Too much cushion. Yeah, she's a good shooter. Showing it right there, up. stolen right off the inbounds. Reynolds puts it home. Happen. And quickly a timeout yeah. by Lori Khalil. That press is giving them too many issues, and the only spots they're getting are on the corner. And if they get the ball at the corner, it's going to be trapped every time. they got to figure out a way to move the ball up the court. They have a lot of issues. Ten-point game now. That's the largest lead of the ball game for Central Maine Community College over PSU Lehigh Valley, 7.42 to go in the second quarter, and we'll take immediate timeout now, too, as it's the first whistle 
of the second quarter. The historic Stonehouse Inn and are the prime destinations for parents and fans visiting the 2017 USCAA Basketball National Championships. The Stonehouse Inn is located in Farmington, Pennsylvania and offers a unique experience for its visitors and patrons. With Victorian bed and breakfast, lodging, and first class dining from Chef Jeremy Critchfield. 7.42 to go. In the second quarter, Central Maine on top of Penn State Lehigh Valley. Yep, Penn State Lehigh Valley is about to get another inbound. It's gonna be interesting to see how they get break this, try to break this press. Yeah, Reynolds picked Soireen's pocket on the last one. Yeah, and had the easiest two she'll ever get. I'm surprised they're not pressing the inbounder right now. This is a very off press from what we've seen. Kind of a two-two-one look right now. Yeah, they might fall back. They're not gonna fall back in their zone. And instead, they try to jump the long pass, yeah. and Moore swats it out of bounds. And you can't make making long passes like that and trying to break the pass, the press. Moore kind of playing free safety right there. Here's Sanders, nice look down low for Swarine, and she lays it home. That was a really good pass by Sanders. Back to an eight-point game, 7.22 to go in the opening half. Hamblin into the corner for Riley Moore being hounded by Swarine. They come with a double. She gets out of it with Hamblin. Extra pass into the corner. Here's Schlimm inside. Gets it to go with the right hand off glass. She is looking very good right now. Nobody calling for the ball. This is the Penn State team is not doing a great job breaking this press. So there's not much movement, and they're not getting open. Swarine just wanted no part of that inbound. She just chucked it right off the central main player. Yeah. And let it go out of bounds. She wanted somebody else to do it. Here's Gordon. This time Penn State breaks it. They have numbers if they hurry. Gordon all the way, kicks back out. Wild pass, loose on the floor. Too many turnovers right now. Up ahead of the pack, it's Reynolds from Hamblin and she'll lay it home, right side of the hoop. Central Maine's up 12 right now. If the Penn State team does not make some adjustments. Oh, there. Reynolds, partially blocked from behind, gets it back, misses the second. And that was another Sanders steal away. Yeah. off the inbounds. This is, they've got to figure out a way to change th this game right now. This is in another danger turnover. slipping away, yeah. and Reynolds comes another away with turnover. another steal. Breakaway layup for Schlimm. 14-point game. This team was looking defeated right now. A lot of people jogging around. Here comes Banks on the run. This time she'll break the press by herself and a foul away from the ball. Yeah, one ran through. Hamlin ran through Sanders right there. Sanders wasn't trying to set a pick either. She was just running up the court. 6.06 to go in the second quarter. Central Maine all over Penn State Lehigh. 34 to 20 in danger of pulling away early. Too many easy buckets to Central, given up to Central Maine right now. And too many turnovers, which yeah. have largely led to those easy buckets. Yes. Holly DeCourcy, number 31 in white, now in the game for Central Maine Community College for the first time today. So is Alia Blondi, number three, as they go even further into their bench. Banks rejected. Gets it back, here's Gordon. Tries to turn the corner and charge. that's an offensive foul, a charge. She had her feet set, she just had her feet set in an odd spot and I don't think Gordon was expecting her to be there. But it was a great read. That was Schlimm who stepped in front. Yes. Now a she'll very take different. a rest. Yes, it's a good play. Wow, are they pressing? Looks like they are. They're pressing. Down 14, well, I mean, you gotta down change 14. something. Yeah, yeah you're well. down 14, I guess you have to make the move. Let's see if they have the legs to do it. Didn't uh, work that time. Yeah, no, I... They didn't run what I thought they would run. The Blondie. Back for DeCourcy, now a Blondie. They swing it around the perimeter, Blay. They're doing a great job with ball movement, making that 2-3 zone, and they're making the Penn State team work to get on defense. Three no good from a Blondie, but offensive board for Deary Deraps, and it's a fresh 30 for Central Maine Community College. Penn State will have to play 30 seconds of defense again. Quick first step there. Here's a mid-range J, no good off the dribble by a Blondie. Rebound for Soireen and the Lions. Watkins on the run, trying to do it herself all the way, and she was fouled. Yep. The shot was too strong. Yep, she's going to have to carry the load of this team because for for um, Barnes to get th three-point looks, because it looks like she's their shooter. She's got to attack. She's got to be aggressive. 
So this this is she's gonna have to show up in this game. Watkins comes up short on the first. Watkins was reasonably quiet the other night. She was in single digits in points, but her team led by 20 throughout most of the game anyway, so they didn't really need her, and she's 0 for 2 on that trip. Rebound to Central yeah, Maine. They can the fast break really if they well. want. From the elbow, too short from Belay. Rebound for Sanders and PSU. Watkins on the run. Watkins trying to do everything right now. Yeah, that pass, pass off, off her foot, foot, and that'll be an over and back. Bad pass from Soreen. We've said a lot of things about Penn State making a lot of mistakes, taking bad shots. I don't think we've really said Central Maine's taking a bad shot yet. They're taking really good looks, and they're playing really good team basketball. The coaching job for Central Maine is really good. And they know how to attack a zone, which a lot of teams don't know how to do. Yes, they are moving the ball. Beautiful movement there, and there's, yeah, there's Harrison with an easy look. Here comes the trap, game. and yeah, she... And I'm, that ball came out of her hands, but she kept on it. Comes Taylor, two on one. She lays it home or on the pass from Taylor. Banks lays it home. Taylor has been the one player who's been adept yes. at breaking the zone. Well, she's easily the fastest player on the court. It doesn't take a, a four-year dash to figure that out. The Corsi, deep two, air ball. Rebound. Nice transition Swearing. pass. That was a good look. Here's Banks on the run, and she was fouled. That was a good defense by number 11, Blaze, she did a good job not letting any easy points. So Banks to the line for two, where she's an 83% free throw shooter. And it's another advantage of having such a deep bench, so you can play more aggressive defensively. Because you don't have to worry about foul trouble. Yes, and she just Maybe. missed one of them, so that that proves that theory right. Yeah, and Lehigh Valley has not been great at the line so far either. They're just one of five so far. And now more mass substitutions for Central Maine. Yep. As Harriman comes in, Schlim back in as well. That was the back end of the Central Maine bench that was just in the ball game. Yep. 13 point game as Banks splits a pair under four to play yep. in the opening half. They're running a softer press so they can get back and play in their 2-3 zone, but it's not, it's not a 2-2-1 like I would thought it would be. Schlem misses from mid-range, and Swarren comes away with the board. Here's Taylor. They're looking to trap her. Picks they're, up her dribble. Nice pass. They're really making them work. And that takes its toll when you only have eight players. Yes. Here's Watkins on the run inside at the bottom of the rim. And, and now up ahead, easy. here's Schlem leaked out in transition, and she'll lay it home. Too Easily the third or fourth breakaway layup yes. we've seen. Yeah. Too many easy buckets for a team that has more depth and coming in is probably the favorite. 38 to 23, 15 point game, 3.15 to go. Yeah. In the second quarter, Reynolds back in. Gathers Harrison will sit. Another inbound against this press. We're going to see what they do. They're doing a good job of pressing the inbounder and not allowing any good passes. Banks looking for help, gets it for Sanders. Why are they pass? Oh, there we go. Watkins made a nice job getting in the lane. Watkins two on two, Euro step move, gets it to go off the window. That's Great move from her. Third time she's had a score off that Euro step. That's definitely her move. Under three to play in the half, 13 point game, Central Maine on top. And it's women's D2 final. Harriman, now for Schlim on the wing. Get past Deary to wraps. Down well, Reynolds. Quick ball movement here. Shot fake inside. Reynolds too short. Has her own miss. Goes back up and is fouled from behind. Just an example on how much they're passing. Well, there were six passes in about 10 seconds. And they're doing a great job of making that 2 3 zone work. And that passing has really helped them. Number 24, Ellie Harrington in white in the game for the first time today as well. Reynolds hits her first. 14 point game, 2.41 to go in the second quarter. She makes this shot, they go by 15. And that will be tied for their largest lead of the game and right on cue. It's 40 to 25. Watkins working for help. This is a very well coached press on defense that they're running right now. But Watkins breaks it, she's trying to attack. And she'll get herself to the line. She definitely likes that right side. She has a Euro step from the right side, but she never goes left, which is it's unique to see. I'm surprised they're not forcing her left. 
Now that could be a halftime adjustment, yeah. but Watkins right now, I think almost out of necessity as much as anything. Yes. She's just attacking with reckless abandon, even yeah. if it's one on three. Well, I mean, she keeps on attacking. She can wear down that defense and maybe start getting her other teammates involved. So that's what she has to do. She is the player of the year. But what she has to do right now is hit her free throws, <laughs> and she's 0 for her last three. That would help, too. Second is good. 40 to 26, 231 to go in the second. She just made that last one. Taylor reaching in, gets caught trying to go for the steal on a Schlimm. That was a good defensive play though, she made a good effort. That will send Central Maine to the line though. She has two fouls now. Not alone on that one no. for Penn State right now. But Taylor has done a good job, especially breaking that press, which she's been the one along with Watkins who has shown yep. the ability to dribble through it. Watkins definitely shows um, her ability to get in the lanes and be someone to pass the ball to. She's she's definitely a smart basketball player. It's very evident. Schlem two for two on that trip. She has 12 that points. That was a 16-point game, yeah. Yeah, she is, she's having a good game. I don't think she's missed a shot. Take a look at that right now. Well, she has four for seven, but she hasn't missed the free throw. Oh, okay. Close enough. 16-point game. Anytime you're over that 50% <laughs> mark, you know what? It's good enough. You're looking good. Ah, a good find. skip pass. Fresh legs for Penn State. Indeed. It's Alexis Schratt, number four, in the game. Played sparingly in the last game against Villa Maria. So yeah. head to go. Yeah, but you need, you need legs to beat that press. Watkins crosses over up top. Nice no look feed. Suarez. Uh, she can't finish. Sanders kept it alive momentarily. Deary Dereps came away with it. I'm surprised he called a timeout and yep. didn't let the go on the breakaway. They could have had two easy points. Trying to draw up a play here most likely with 158 to go. Yeah, I guess you're two minutes out. You want to get the best looks you can to try to capitalize on your big lead and not let Penn State feel good going to halftime because that's a moral victory going into halftime. Could have possibly been a scripted timeout, too. That yeah. They just knew last possession, all right, we're going to take a timeout, and here's what we're going to do out yes. of it. It's yes. possible, too. It is, at, it is 158, so it might have been planned at the two-minute yeah, mark. Yeah, at the two-minute mark, that yeah. the first whistle they would. Yeah. So 158 to go in the half, 42 to 26. Central Maine on top of Penn State, Lehigh Valley, the number one seed with a 17-game winning streak. They're sitting pretty right now as Lehigh Valley tries to claw their way back into it. Looks like Penn State's still going to run a press. And they will, led by Schratt, number four in blue. Good and job. Throwing it away there. Here's Watkins. Oh. Knocked out of her hands, and it will stay with Lehigh Valley. It was Harrington who threw the errant pass, and Watkins jumped it. Yes. That's a very big possession. If they can make points here, they can get some momentum going and try to before the halftime. Inside, Swarine. Schratt saved it. Yep. 22 on the shot clock. Here's Banks. Yeah. Holding and looking for help. Working left with the left hand. They're going to swing the ball to Watkins, probably. Looks like they're angling that way. It's Schratt going right around yep. the screen. There's, There's Watkins. Watkins. Eight on the clock, driving baseline, and drove right in the teeth of the defense, but was fouled. Hey, if she makes these shots, you can get some momentum going. Would be back to a 14-point game. Yeah. She'll be shooting two as both teams are in the penalty. That's the first on Harrington. And this time, Watkins hits the first. Hamblin back in. Harrington will sit. Central Maine bit by bit getting their starters back out there. I'm going to be interested at halftime to see how many players they've had go into the game because I've seen a lot of faces. 10 or 11 at least. Wow. Got to do a quick count. That we'll is, do it at halftime. That is deep. That is going deep. And that's again, that's just at one half. Yes. Maddie Nett, number 10 in blue, checks into the game now. So Penn State is at 8 now with Necht in the game. 14-point Four, lead after two made free throws. Watkins did convert both that time, 122 to play. In the opening half, here's Harriman. Cut off, and she'll back out. And stays still in the zone, yeah. down low, and an easy lay-in for Schlimm. Schlimm. She's looking good. She's smart. She really can read that zone. And she, she gets a steal. the seams, and right on cue, Schlimm <laughs> comes away with the steal, too. 
Here's Reynolds, turnaround jumper, air ball. Banks comes away with the board. Yeah, pushing the ball up. Three on one situation, they shut, oh, they didn't attack. Wow, I'm surprised. Neck looked unsure, and Harriman comes away with the steal. Fires up ahead for Reynolds. It's an easy two. She can catch it, yep, cut off, back, back out. Cut. And they will smartly back out. Harriman a deep three off to the right. And that'll be a foul on Schlimm. I'm surprised with that foul call. She didn't get very handsy. No, that was a, a bit of a weak call right there, <laughs> but Penn State will certainly take it. <laughs> 44 to 28, 40.6 seconds to go. In the opening half, it's all Central Maine. Is Sanders a good free throw shooter? Sanders is not very good, 40%. That's what she doesn't do well. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, since she's a center, usually centers have issues shooting free throws. This will be interesting. And Sanders just a freshman as well. Yeah, Bricks is the first. 50% yeah. from the field and 40% from the line. It's not very often you're better from the field than you are from the line, <sighs> but Sanders is. 40% uh, from the free throw line, that's not... That's something that they'll definitely <laughs> work on as her career progresses. <laughs> she was strong second. on the second. Moore chases down the board. About Did a 10 second difference between shot and game clock. 35 on the game clock. Hamblin crossing over on Schratt who's in the game again. Harriman thought about it. Drives baseline, steps back from 18 in and out. That was a bad look. Long she rebound. It'll be a jump ball. You're right, Harriman is the only one so far that we've seen kind of try to do it herself yes, a little bit. Everybody yes. else has dutifully moved the ball. Yeah. Harriman is hunting her shot a bit. The rest of the team is really doing a good job passing, pass first. She has taken two questionable shots, but she still played good basketball. Possession arrow goes to Central Maine so they she can hold for the shot. final shot, but they don't. Air ball Air from ball. Harriman. That could have been the final possession, probably should have been the final yeah, possession. Yeah, they should have held it. You Here don't want to let this track. team get another point. Eight on the game clock. Watkins, Watkins cut off, late. kicks oh, wide open. open Strat. Got it. Nice. That was a big shot. If they can hold them. Yeah, that 13 points going into halftime. It w was looking pr worse. <laughs> it's a lot better than 16. Yes. Let's go with that. Yes. 13 is still your a three away from just being a, a double-digit game. Yeah, they look making it single digits. They look good going into the locker room. I mean, go a three going in the locker room. That's going to give them a little bit of confidence, and they're going to need confidence to make a 13 comeback. 13 yeah, Lehigh down. Valley will need plenty of that to come back from down 44-31. So we will take a break and be back with the start of the third in just a little bit.
Ricky Sobrano back here alongside Jason Collins as we get set for the start of the third quarter between Central Maine and PSU Lehigh Valley in this Women's Division II final in the USCAA National Basketball Championship Tournament. 44-31 Central Maine on top and Quite frankly, it could have been worse. It was as large as 16. Yep. And just when you turn the ball over 17 yes. times in a half, yes. odds are you're not going to be winning. Odds are it's not no. going to be close. Lehigh Valley still with a chance if they can clean up their ball handling a little bit. Yeah. Central Maine has only shot four from 17 from three. Mm -hmm. If they start knocking down some shots, they can run away with this game. PSU Lehigh has a lot of ground to make up. they got to take care of the ball. And they only attempted 10 shots in the second quarter. They got to they gotta put the ball at least up. They got to at least shoot the ball. And shot 6 of 10. Yes. <laughs> Ironically, it's just yes. they turned it over so many times, they yes. did not get a chance to attempt a lot of shots. All right, another inbound for Penn, Lehigh, Penn State. They will get the first possession. If they get the ball. And Gordon can dunk. corral it. They can't have. That's, that's, that's another yeah. turnover. You just, that's just bad basketball right there. I'm not sure I've ever seen... A turnover like that off the no. opener of a half. Yeah, that's that a new was, one. That was yeah. a side inbound. That wasn't. Yeah, yeah. A that's not line. length of the floor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's usually a gimme, yes. but not that time. Yeah, that was a bad pass. So here's Belay, Central Maine, in white. Penn State. PSU with the, the Navy. And they are in that zone, as you said, and working her way to the line is Gethers Hairston, fouled by Sanders. Honestly, don't know if they should be running zone. I mean, the zone they're running, they're giving the baseline. And number 10, Shlom, has shown that she has moves on the baseline to break the zone. And they, this team that they're playing is very skilled. It honestly isn't working, and I think they should change, to be quite frank. Yeah, but with eight players, the yeah. options are not a... Limited. A, yeah. yeah. They don't exactly abound to the options right now as Gethers Harrison splits a pair. 14-point game and a steal right off the inbounds. Reynolds fouled. That press is just killing Lehigh. They can't figure out a way around it. Also never seen, that's at least the third time that we've seen the the man guarding the out-of-bounds yes. line on the inbound come away with the steal. You need and that's better, something you never yes, see. You yeah. need a better inbound passer. I, mm -hmm. Honestly, I think Watkins should be running the inbound pass because as soon as she passes the ball in, she can run around and mm -hmm. become the person that that person the passes outlet. to. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. As Reynolds hits the first, yeah. it's one of those things that on a half-court play at the end of an NBA game, what do they always say? You watch the inbounder. And yes. It would be the same theory there yes. if Watkins was to inbound the ball. Exactly, exactly. Reynolds is second, good as well. 16-point game. They run right into the press again. And they, they trap out of the corner, and they're moving the ball up. They, they figured it out that time. It was good passing. Nobody took more than two steps. And Watkins had her hands on the ball, too, which helped. Watkins was the one who was trapped, and yes. if there's somebody that you want trapped, it is Watkins because she knows how to get out of it. Yes. Here is Gordon. A lot of dribbling. Swarine, now Watkins, nine Watson on the clock. Down. Drives right, partially blocked by Reynolds. Yep. And gathers Harrison with the board. Here's Hamblin on the run, kicks into the corner for Belay. She's trapped, gets out of it with Schlim. Back for Belay. They work this ball around, barely taking any dribbles. Here's a three Hamblin, contested though, too short. Reynolds comes away with it, hit the bottom of the bucket, and a foul. Reynolds has done a really good job of being at the right place at the right time. She always seems to be around the ball defensively and getting timely rebounds. She's played in a really good game. She's yeah, doing she a little bit of everything. Now has yeah. three blocks, yeah. nine points, eight boards, yes. and two steals. So that is filling a stat yes. line right there. She's hitting the free throws. I think this is the third straight she's had coming out of the half. Two of two at the line in the first half, and she has made two now in this half. She's I'm not Taylor surprised by this substitution. Gordon has made two turnovers already, and Taylor has been helpful to beat the press. It's probably the right basketball move. Taylor just does not look fast enough to deal with the press, while Taylor is lightning yeah. quick. Yes. Thanks, a three. Got it. That was much needed. If they are going to make a comeback, that is the shooter on this team. They are going to need to get her open looks. 8.48 to go. 
Penn State running the press. They're they're down by 15, so it makes sense that they're running press right now. Might as well. 49-34, tipped out of bounds, and it will stay with Central Maine. Watkins has a really good presence on defense at jumping passing lanes. She's definitely probably one of the smarter players on the floor. Averages over three steals per game. That's not Reynolds four and a half, but still pretty good. <laughs> four and a half. That's insane. just absurd. <laughs> That's video game numbers, as they say. <laughs> Here's Schlimm. Picks up her dribble. Now Hamblin into the corner of three. Too strong from Blay. Long rebound. Has it back. Nice look for Schlimm. Rejected from behind, but right there is Gethers Harrison. Nice block by Sanders, but nobody grabbed the board. Penn State did a really good job of getting the ball out of the passer's hands really quickly, and they beat this press this time. 8.05 to go in the third. 17-point game. Central Maine on top. 16 on the shot clock, and that's the other thing. It takes them routinely 10 to 12 seconds to get into their offense yes. because of the press. Yep, now there's only nine seconds left in the shot clock. Foul down well, it'll be on uh, Gethers Hairston as Sanders was posting her up. Yep. Second on Gethers Hairston. Yep. They have the right ingredients for players wise to make a comeback. I mean, you have Watkins as the player of the year, they have a shooter, and Sanders is a good inside presence. So if they, they do have the the weapons to make a comeback. Here's Banks on the move, a runner too strong with the right, out of bounds, and it is off of Hamblin last. That doesn't really look like her strength coming off that block. She, she should probably stay closer to the outside. No, Banks is without a doubt a shooter. She doesn't look quite comfortable with the ball on the no, deck. No. Taylor inbounds the Banks. She'll go back outside, back for Taylor. Works right with the right hand, banks a deep three, thought about it, sets her feet, finds Taylor, nice movement, Sanders, and she lays it home off the window. Really good passing right there. That was really nice to watch. That was perhaps Penn State's best possession yeah, since the first quarter at yeah. least, and that was without Watkins touching the ball. Yeah, there's Harrison open, came up short, a lot of contact, no call. Sanders the board. That was a really good job by Soren with the def defensive positioning, getting her hands up. She did a really good job against the taller Arlena Hyreston. Here's Swarn with the ball now, looking for Watkins, hands it off to her. Watkins on the run into the lane, rejected by Gethers Harrison, who took it away. Watkins has shown that she's going with that right hand, and Harrison started is starting to turn her body and force her to go and take a different direction. Schwimm on the run, ran into a wall, balls out of bounds off of Schwimm last. I'm surprised she didn't get a charge call. There are two people that fell down. Yeah, that was Sanders and Swarren. Yeah. Bowled over two, but ball goes to PSU in either event. Only three minutes in the half, and they're already making substitution. Shows their how much depth this team from Maine has. Blay sits, Harriman back in. 6.44 to go in the third quarter. Central Maine on top by 15 and a foul. Yeah, it was at a reach the half court strike. Hamlin had a zizzer reach out. Second foul on Central Maine. First on Hamlin. Actually, beg your pardon, that's third. I read the wrong line. Taylor to inbound. Does so to Watkins. Watkins. Harriman on her and she'll back out. Yeah, she immediately, she was on the left side, and you see she dribbles off to the right side, trying to get her what she's comfortable with. Right hand dominant, no doubt there. Here's Taylor, crosses that was over. a good move. Works her way inside, Sanders has it. Back for Taylor, 14 on the clock. Quick first step, a floater, no good from eight. Tipped out of bounds, and that is off. Of Derby Duraps, last. Taylor has really been impressive. She's very shifty. I'm mm -hmm. surprised she hasn't gotten more minutes because she's making really good plays. Well, she's getting a lot of run in this game, much more than in the last one, the victory over Villa Maria. It's partially because of the foul trouble that Gordon has been in. That's partially just because she's been more effective than Gordon. Yes. Watkins holds, 17 on the clock. Banks a runner, no good. Off glass from eight. Here's Harriman on the run, Harriman. Kicks to the wing for Blay, who's just checked back in. Open look. Too short from Deary to wraps, but she has her own miss. Reynolds has it on the baseline, into the lane. Kicks back out, too short from Moore. Out of bounds, and it will go to Penn State. Central Maine has had issues shooting from the three today. I'm surprised. They've missed open looks. They yes, have. they've gotten good looks, so they just haven't knocked them down. But if there's a weakness on this team, it's that they're not a great three-point shooting team. Yes. They're top of the division in pretty much everything except that. Yeah. 
Watkins fouled. Yeah, Watkins going against going the right side again. <laughs> Not a shooting foul, so Penn State will have to inbound. I'm very surprised that the defensively central central Maine hasn't forced you to go left. Inbound thrown away by Taylor and stolen. Does a really good pass. He was stuck in the corner. Deary DeRaps stepped in front of it and a foul the other way as Riley Moore brought the ball up court. Ah, that was a touchy failure call right there. <laughs> There's been quite a few of those today. <laughs> a lot of coaches would agree with you. 5.30 to go in the third 15-point game. Central Maine on top in this D2 Women's Championship game. Moore in the corner. Pass was tipped, but she gets out of it. Swing it back around the perimeter. It's Reynolds on the baseline. Cut off, nearly threw it away, and Deary Draps cannot save it. Yeah, forcing him to the baseline is starting to make Central Maine make a couple mistakes. It's starting to work in Penn State's favor. Well, they can start knocking down some shots. Defensively, they're starting to hone it in right now. Well, it's been Schlimm, who's done a, a nice job on the baseline. That was Reynolds that time who turned it over. Yeah. Taylor running the point. Finds Watkins. Swarren at the free throw line. Kicks back out. Bank shot fake. Steps back. Tough shot. Air ball off She's the left. She's forcing shots right now. And she uh, definitely has yeah. the three ball on her mind. Yeah, and it looks like the coach might be pulling her soon. <laughs> She's forcing a couple shots. So and uh, Taylor was in a position to cut, and she showed how young she was because she had a very good backdoor cut, and she didn't make didn't it. Didn't take it. So it, she's showing her, her how young she is right now. So at 4.50 on the clock, we're in immediate timeout. Central Maine on top, 51 to 36. The USCAA sends a special thank you to the 2017 partner, Russ Blaho of Allstate Insurance. Visit Russ at 770B Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown or call him at 724-439-9700. Central Maine on top of PSU Lehigh Valley. 51 to 36, 450 to go. In the third quarter, and this USCAA Women's Division II Basketball National Championship game. Central Maine, the top seed, coming in with a 17-game winning streak. PSU Lehigh Valley, the number two seed, entering with a 21 and three record. It's been of a very low, very low scoring five minutes right now. Central Maine's only had seven points, and Lehigh's only had five since the half. Now Central Maine had a over 20 point first quarter and has quieted down since then. Yep. Both teams have, in fact, got yes. off to a fast start and slowed since. Yeah, Penn State Moore. has tried to run press, but Central Maine so, has so much depth and fresh legs that they're easily running around it. Harriman, tough shot, too short from three in the corner. Harriman has been the one who's fired with reckless abandon every time she enters the ball game. She's forcing too many shots. She just did have a really good nice hustle, hustle play, though. Play. That yeah. was really nice. So I guess that evens out the bad look because <laughs> <It does. laughs> she sprinted down the court. <laughs> Realized she took a bad <laughs> shot and busted it back on defense to make up for it. You got to keep the coach happy if you want to stay in. Well, you know what? When you play 14 players, you better. <laughs> Sanders no good. Air ball on the runner. And here is Harriman again. This time up ahead for Blay. Blay to the hoop. And she's fouled from behind. She'll go to the line for two. That was a good foul. Prevented an easy bucket. Yes, because she definitely had the basket. They'll call that on Watkins. Yeah, that's her second foul. She's not in foul trouble yet, but she shouldn't get too handsy. I thought they were initially going to call it on Sanders. That would have been her third, so that would have been more problematic. Yeah, you definitely need Sanders in the game. That's the only big you have, and if you give up, up that up on the 2-3 zone, Central Maine is going to score a lot of points inside. Play misses both, but coming away with the board is Deary DeRaps. Kicks back out for Harriman, thought about it. Now she's trapped. Yeah. Kicks back out. Deary DeRaps will try her luck. Too strong, long rebound. Taylor's got a nice opening. Here is Schratt, who's just checked back in. Schratt coast to coast, oh, doesn't get the roll. That was, that was a rough roll. She really put it off the glass, though. Back the other way, it's Blay, a wide open Harriman, checks the ball, sets that, her feet and puts it in. That was a good shot. She was wide open. That absolutely <laughs> was. She had so much time that time, I think she actually checked the seams yes, on the ball. she did put her hands on the seams. <laughs> yeah, this one tipped turnover. in midcourt. Another turnover by Lehigh. 
Watkins looks gassed right now for Lehigh Valley. Yeah, she's jogging around, her shoulders are down. Central Maine up 18. Harriman wide open in the corner. Deary to wraps. Too short, tipped underneath. And it's a fresh 30. Yeah, another deep. Wow. And Harriman puts it in again. Moore set it up with the offensive board. 21 point game, largest lead of the ball game. 3-10 to go, foul yeah. at midcourt. That this the press that they're running is daring you to go to the middle. They're gonna trap you. And Taylor, she's a freshman and she went to the middle and that's why she lost the ball. Luckily they fouled she her. She was play. bailed out that yes. time, yes. Yeah, but she's she's gotta make smarter plays right now. So Harriman quickly has six points in the last minute or so. 3.08 to go in the third quarter. It's a 21 point oh, game. Geez. Suarez dribbled it off the foot of Deary Draps. Now lost it. Deary no. Draps pressuring their whole way, and Schlim comes away with it. Yeah. Schlim in the corner. Yes. Now they'll slow it down, the pace it picked up. Open look, Deary Draps. Too strong. Nearly landed on top of the shot clock. Rebound for Sanders. Here's Shrat. You can court. tell how fresh those legs are. They are pressuring the ball handler all the way up and making her work. Shrat has only just come back in, though, so her legs are fresh as well. Not the yes. case for everybody out there for Penn State right now. No, Watkins. Watkins came up short, hit the bottom of the bucket, gets it back out of bounds, and it's going to Central Maine. Watkins just looks incredibly frustrated right now. Yeah. I mean, she... She's good at getting to the right block, but it doesn't look like she has really anything else. So, I mean, if you take that away from her, it's going to be an interesting night. And now she will take a seat. Maddie necked in the game now, 5'7", freshman guard. Here's Harriman playing with tons of energy here. Yep. Have Reynolds wide open down low. They yep. finally get it to her, yep. and she missed the bunny, but fouled on the... Put back is Gethers Harrison. She'll go to the line. Yeah, Reynolds showed great offensive awareness. She found a hole in the zone. It was on the baseline, and she just waited there. She didn't like make too much noise and whine for the ball. Made a very good smart play. A lot of smart players on this Central Maine Mustangs. And Reynolds, you were right. There were two or three passes, extra passes, before they found her, but they yeah. did find her as the yes. point. Yes. And it led to the free throws. Yeah. Yeah, there's Harrison, too short on the second, 22-point game, 2.02 to go in the third. Here's Nett in her own backcourt, Swarine, now right. Shrat. Mustang sticking to the press right now. And that's a 10-second ten ten violation. A lot of freshmen out there right now. Yeah. That was Neck the freshman, Shrat a freshman, and Swarine a junior, but Swarine is a forward. And they weren't quite sure what to do. Watkins is not on the floor, and she's really one of the smarter players that they have, and they're definitely missing her right now. And Taylor did not get a hand on the ball that time. She's been very good at breaking the press. Here's Schlim for Reynolds. Back out Harriman. Schlim has it back, fires away. Got it. Schlim is having a very good game. She's made a lot of good. She sets really good screens. She's a good shooter. I'm very impressed with this girl. And that's going to be a foul. On Harriman. She jumped the passing lane on Shrat. And the Central Maine team is fun to watch. Yeah, they, they are constant movement. It's a very unselfish team. Uh, the movie Hoosiers would be very pr impressed mm. by this right now. You're right about that. <laughs> There's been some offensive possessions where I don't think the ball has hit the floor more than once or twice. Yes. Here's Shrat. The Central Maine is over the limit in fouls, that was their fifth. So Shrat at the line, 4-2, she has four points now. 1.30 to go in the third as Shrat rims out her second, 61-37. to Central Maine on top. Here's Harriman on the run, Taylor on her. Schlim with it, down low for Reynolds, takes an extra dribble, drop from behind. And then Gethers comes away with it. Schlim saves it at the free throw line, Harriman open a deep three. Too short that time, long rebound for Schlim. She'll kick back out for Harriman and they'll reset. Schlim is doing a great job of setting up the offense and setting good passes to try to beat the 2-3 zone. Skip pass for a Blondie who's just come back in. Other quick ball movement there, a yeah. Blondie corner, puts it on the deck with the right hand, picks up her dribble good here, Schlim an open Schlim. look. Book it. She is really smart. Her basketball IQ is high. 
Ash gets Ash 20 and has a steal and a foul before the extra pass. Harriman would have had an easy look. Yeah. So there have been several stars on the Central Main team, yes. but Christina Schlimm, or rather Jenny Schlimm, has certainly stuck out. Reynolds Schlimm, at the line yeah. for two. I would say Schlimm and Reynolds have really probably had the best two games out of this Central, Central Main team. Reynolds, 12 points on the day. Has one more free throw to come. Now Haley Peterson, 5'7", freshman guard in the game. As Harriman, who did good work off the bench in that stint, will take a seat. 39.5 in the clock in the third. We Reynolds said, hits her second. No, we said at five minutes the Central Maine has had scored seven points, and now they have scored 21 points in the half. So this last five minutes, they have been dominant. Hit a couple threes, a bunch of free throws as well. Yeah. 25 on the game clock, 16 on the shot clock. Here's Taylor around a high screen from Swarin. Inside Schratt, nearly lost that it's saved by Schratt. Goes up with an unorthodox lefty, lefty hook that's from that's the hip hook. almost. Yeah. And gathers Hairston, comes up with the board. Seven on the clock. Here's a three from a blondie, air ball. Two on the clock, doesn't look like Penn State will get up a shot, and they will not. Like that, like that's an, a good example of how young they are. Mm -hmm. They don't think they don't have the presence. There's three seconds left in the clock, and they don't. Uh, they don't know that there's three seconds left in the clock. Cause she was trying to make a pass out. She wasn't looking to take the shot. I mean, it's just you can tell that the younger team mm -hmm. is playing against it. Sixty-five to thirty-seven. As we head to the fourth quarter, Central Maine all over. PSU Lehigh. It's a 28-point game, and it's yes. looking like Central Maine, the number one seed, will cruise to the victory and the championship in this USCAA Women's Division II championship game. First Federal of Green proudly supports the USCAA National Basketball Championships. Visit firstfederalofgreen.com. Again, firstfederalofgreen.com for all of your banking needs. Ricky Sobrano and Jason Collins here with you on USCAA.com. As we head to the fourth in this women's Division II championship game. Lehigh rest Watkins at the end of that quarter. She's going to have to have a big fourth quarter if there is any chance of doing anything with this 20-point deficit. 28. 28, my, yeah. My <laughs> yeah. Will not be easy, but to even make it respectable, she'll yes. need to have a big half. Yeah. First possession of the fourth goes to Central Maine. Peterson tried to save it at the half court stripe, but shucked it out of bounds. So it goes to Penn State. Penn State in the Navy. Central Maine in the white with the red tops. Gordon back in the game. She sat most of the third quarter yeah. and has had a rough game. Yeah. She's had trouble breaking the press. Erie back in as well. We haven't seen her in a while. Sanders calling for it down well on the block. Dribbles Watkins underneath the bucket. Open. Kicks for Erie. Has an open walk and she fires. Too short. Way too short in fact. Reynolds yeah. corrals the board and is fouled by Erie. And it might be a nice note to notice that Watkins shot was short not long and that might be a, something to say about if her legs are gone already. Mm -hmm. They did play the late game last night, this Penn State team, which is the one thing that we don't want to forget. Their game finished at 11.30, almost 12 o'clock. So this is a reasonably quick turnaround. That was the fourth foul on Erie. A couple Penn State players in foul trouble. Gordon is one of them. She has 4-2 as Reynolds can't can the shot. Long rebound. Erie fighting for it. Gordon saves it. 9.02 on the clock in the fourth. Gordon nearly turned it over again. Yeah, crashed Gordon's into the deck. playing out of control right now, and it's definitely a good example of why they're losing right now. Here's Erie, kicks back for Watkins. Travel. Travel. Yeah, she set her feet, took a left step, and then took a couple more. That's obviously not legal. Penn State just out of sorts right here. Watkins swats that one into her own bench. As the waves of Central Maine subs continue to come, Christina Blay back in the yeah, game. That's that's a big advantage. I mean, these girls are sprinting up and down the court, and Penn State's team is just jogging around. They they don't have the legs. Here's Hamlin passing traffic, stolen by Banks, and she's fouled. 
It's not easy to go with seven, perhaps eight players when you've got a team that goes about 14 deep. Yeah. Got to count up eventually how many players Central Maine has played. <laughs> it's going to be 13 of 14, and it's a, a new, new it's player a just checking the game. List. Samantha Burke for the first time. So yeah, I might have to add one. Not even on my list. Yeah, no. Man, she's 34, 34. Samantha Burke, yeah. six foot two. There yeah. she is. <laughs> six Look foot at two. that. Yeah. Nice to go to a six foot two girl every once in a while. <laughs> Here's Watkins diving baseline inside Sanders. Nice look, can't finish, but she'll go to the line for two. That's honestly something that I think they missed out on this game. They should have went to Sanders more often. She has good touch, and Watkins has carried too big of a load. Sanders, just two of five in this game. Yeah, she, all for she, two from the line. She should have at least been shooting at least ten attempts by now. Would have slowed the game down a bit, too, yes. if they posted her up. Yes, I mean, the head coach of Central Maine Mustangs did a great job. Mm -hmm. He played press, so he's playing with his fresher legs, and he's making that 2-3 zone that they run, run a lot. They are doing, that's not like a normal 2-3 zone. They are trapping and stuff like that, so they're making them run. He's playing to his strength. The head coach has done a phenomenal job. Now he's the coach of the year for a reason. That is Andrew Morong. On the run, Belay, a lot of contact there. Sanders gets a clean block, though. Here comes Gordon. Gordon pushing the tempo, open look, Banks. Got it. She's she's a good shooter. She, she gets a clean look. She's made a couple. It's her third triple, I believe, and it's just she's been forcing some heavily contested ones out yep. of necessity as much as anything. Yes. On the rate to play in the game, 25-point game, Central Maine on top. Diving in for the steal was Erie. And that's her fifth, and she mouthed it off to the official, too. Got teed up, so she's out of the game. Yeah, but that, that was that was a touch, if you really call. This late in the game, I'm surprised that they're not putting the whistles in their, not, uh, in their pocket right now. They're, the other team's up by 25. Now, this has been a technical, happy tournament. There's been at least 10 just that I've seen technicals in this yeah. tournament, including one game with six. Wow. So <laughs> Jeez. It's been, it's been a mouthy tournament, I guess <laughs> is the way to put it. It's been a mouthy tournament. Yeah. Hamblin will shoot the technical free throws. This girl's got, I mean, out. she missed the first one, but she's proven that she can shoot. She's got a couple good open looks, and she has a really nice good shooting form. So right person at the line right now. 82% from the line is Hamblin. Makes good on your prognostication and hits the second. He has seven points, does Nicole Hamlin, and now the ball stays with Central Maine off of the initial foul. Hamlin backing it out, finds Belay, back for Hamlin. Harriman, number 13, back in the game as well. Hamlin nearly lost it, saves it on the elbow, kicks for Belay, shot fake, pull up in mid-range, no good off glass, tipped underneath, and Reynolds comes away with it, nearly threw it away. Part of the reason why I think they're down by so much is they're playing out of control within that 2-3 zone. They're making too many, they're pulling out and guarding people at the half court line. That's stretching the zone way too much and it's making it easy for Central Maine to get easy buckets. Well now it's out of necessity because they yes. down 25, they feel the need to trap and press <laughs> as much as possible, but you're right, even earlier in the game yes. they showed signs of doing that. Yeah. So we're in immediate timeout here, 7.25 to go in the fourth quarter. It's 66 to 40, Central Maine in this Women's Division II championship game. Specialty Conduit in Manufacturing is a proud supporter of the USCAA National Basketball Championships and is Pennsylvania's leader in plumbing and manufacturing. Visit www.specialtyconduit.com to learn more about its newest locations in Boyntown, Pennsylvania and how specially Conduit can help you. 66 to 40, Central Maine. Looking to close out PSU Lehigh Valley, 7.25 to go in the fourth quarter. All they really gotta do is take care of the ball and do what they've been doing all the game and make smart plays and they should hold on to this win. I mean, I don't see a lot of 26 point leads blown in 7.25. No. This would be Rather legendary if PSU <laughs> is able to come back, but who knows? No, the actual Penn State women's team is not on the floor. The Penn State <laughs> can be high. <laughs> you might need the UConn women's team to come back from this. That would be interesting. Would they? That, that is actually kind of <laughs> interesting. I'd say yes, yeah. but here's Burke. Wow. She finishes she from eight feet in the baseline. 6'2 and can shoot like yeah. that? Yeah. I'm surprised <laughs> she's not on the floor more. And she doesn't even play much, as we said. Yeah. 28-point game, 7.04 to go. 
Let's see if at any point Central Maine backs off. That press was not as aggressive as we've seen them go yes. before. Well, I mean, you don't have to be as aggressive when you're up by 26 Yeah, points. 28 points, my bad. Gordon uh, will get herself to the line. Yeah. She's had a frustrating game. Yeah, if somebody would have set her feet and taken a charge, she would have gotten it because she was out of control going to the basket. Ashley Gordon playing on four fouls, hasn't gotten much going. A second team All-American in the USCAA. Had a double-double against Albany in the first round matchup. This is her first free throw there. More substitutions for Central Maine. It's now number four, Michaela Yanez, a sophomore guard, standing 5-3 out of Lisbon, Maine in the game. So I believe they're now up to 14 players in this game. That's my unofficial count, <laughs> which is amazing for a championship game. <laughs> From the free throw line, a pull that up, Hamblin in and out. Reynolds, Reynolds comes away with the board. And Hamblin will reset. 6.30 on the game clock. Crosses over, picks up her dribble at the free throw line. Good Tipped and stolen by line. Watkins. Harriman trailing. Watkins scoop shot, good off glass. Well, she's good from that right block, and that's where she went. She's, she's a good player. Finish with the right hand, and Watkins is the player of the USCAA year. Yeah, player of the year, yeah. In D2 women's hoops, here's Harriman. Long skip pass for Yernez. Back for Hamlin, 16 on the shot clock, 6.02 on the game clock. 26-point game. I expect to see a lot of urgency from Lehigh being down this much and only having six minutes left. Here comes Banks as they force the turnover. Banks. Reynolds almost got a steal there. She was very savvy with that. Yeah, Banks, she's not in her element when she's handling the ball and bringing no. it up court. More Banks of a spot right shooter. Open. Yeah, that, that does a bad skip pass. Wow, she forced it. Oh, oh she hit it. Big <laughs> shot. Wow, that was a very contested shot. I mean, they're down by. Did she about to get and four points? she got points? the foul, too, yeah. She Look at that. Four point play. Would be the first four point play we've seen here in the tournament if she does convert. I mean, they're going to go down by 24. Who knows? She heats up. <laughs> and the last game, girl shot, made eight threes in the whole game. Yeah, I had heard. That yeah. was uh, Concordia. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Banks hits it. Completes the four-point play. 22-point game. 5.35 to go in the fourth. Here's the Corsi back in the game now. First time we've seen her in the second. Burke heads to the bench. Riley Moore back in as well. Harriman trapped, gets out of it. Now they have numbers. Velez down low to Corsi, open, puts it up, air ball. Rebound, Gordon, barreled over a man. And that's gonna be a charge going the other what? way. What? I don't, I don't know if I agree with that one. Her feet weren't set. I thought perhaps <laughs> she used the free arm, <laughs> okay. and that was why. Okay. I believe that may have been the call, mm -hmm. and Gordon has fouled out now. So Harriman will inbound. 5.15 on the clock, 22-point game. Into Velez, the Corsi, now Harriman a three. Foul before the shot, travel. So Harriman turns it over, and Penn State can get back Love. within 20, which is would be the closest they've been in quite a while. Another whistle. Stays with Lehigh Valley. Near Sanders, near side. Harriman on her back, nearly threw it away. Oh Taylor my goodness. lost her dribble and travel. I wasn't sure about the travel. I agree with you there. I see the look on your face. <laughs> so I don't think she had possession of the ball, but she in either had, event. She pivot stepped. Here's Velez. Picks up her dribble to Corsi at the free throw line, cut off by Sanders. Hamblin in the corner for Les. You can definitely see the urgency in Lehigh's defense right now. They're playing they're playing good defense. Yeah, Central Maine has certainly slowed in the second half. Here's Harriman. Step back three. Tough shot off to the right. And getting hammered on the rebound. That was a good board. That was really good effort by Surin. And she stuck her nose in there. And that'll be the fifth foul on Central Maine. As well, 4.38 to go in the ball game. Central Maine on top, 68 to 46. The USCAA would like to thank Laurel Highlands Visitors Bureau, Fay Penn Economic Development, 
Fayette County Chamber of Commerce, the Herald Standard, and Penn State Fayette. Without these partners, this event would not be possible. 4.38 to go in the fourth quarter. Central Maine on top of PSU Lehigh, 68 to 46, 438 to go. In uh, the ball game, and increasingly it appears the season for PSU Lehigh Valley, actually the season for both teams, it's just one ends on a winning note, one ends on a losing note. Yeah. <laughs> it is the final game of the season, the championship game mm -hmm. in the Women's Division II bracket yep. of the USC 2017 Basketball National Championship. 29 turnovers now for Lehigh Valley to 14 for Central Maine yes. Community College. Yeah, that We thought that when they had seven turnovers at first quarter, we thought that would not be a pace, but 24 with four minutes left in this fourth They've actually quarter. topped it. <laughs> yes, yeah. they've, I don't know. Uh, this game has not been played at the pace that I think Penn State wanted to play it at. They have a lower number of team players on the bench. They played at Central Maine's pace, which is fast paced. Penn State probably wanted to come and play a little slower, and they really have not been able to do that. Swarine splits a pair. PSU back within 21. And I you're really right. The first quarter, they were able to hang in, at least the first yes. half of it. Yes. And then after that, they just were not able to do so. you got to be able to respect, though, the fact that they are really still using a lot of effort. They are not lying down. They are definitely they're doing a good job right now. They are still playing hard. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Eight on the clock and losing the ball off her own foot is hey, Christina they, Blank. They go down and score. They can make this a below 20-point deficit. And it was at 30. It was close to 30 at the end of the quarter. Yeah, it was 28 yes. at the end of three. So right now, yeah, Lehigh Valley is winning this quarter. Here's Taylor zigzagging up court. Banks looking for her own shot. Loses yeah. her dribble, finds Watkins, who is fouled, and she'll go to the line for two. Not a shooting foul, but Central Maine in the penalty. Yeah, you can tell Central Maine has rotated players on Watkins throughout the game, so keeping fresh legs on Watkins and really pushing her and getting up in, in her when she's at the three-point line. So they really made her work today a lot. Watkins just 5 of 16 from the field. Yep. It's one point off of the team high, which is Banks. No. Actually just tied it with that free throw. Both have 15. She makes this pop shot, though. They were down 19. There and she goes. And she does, so Penn State closer than they have been in quite a while. They turn up the intensity a little bit. They can make this game a single-digit lead. Taylor Etsy, number 15 for Central Maine in the game as well. So now I think they're up to 15 players, Oh, which is amazing. Good deflection by number 14, Banks. Watkins with the attempt. Sanders, Sanders. put back. There you go. Some quick points. They're looking good right now. Look at that. 17-point game, 335 yes. to go. Nice little run for PSU Lehigh Valley. That's Etsy oh, with, with the a ball. Steal. Nice strip Banks by Taylor. with another steal. Up ahead, Watkins. Watkins. Left hand. Oh. Nope, not that time. Oh, Too strong. <laughs> you were waiting for that all game. I, can <laughs> I see. wanted to see her make a left. Harriman will pull it back out. 3.15 on the game clock, 68 to 51. 3.12 to go in the fourth. Into the corner, it's Belay. Puts it up from 16. Too get strong, rebound. long rebound. Sanders, Sanders. Move the ball up the court. Yeah, she had Banks up ahead, yeah, but they should have pulled back it. out. Yeah. Watkins has got to get this moving quickly. They cannot wait until the last 10 seconds to get a shot off. Here she goes. Watkins a floater, no good off glass. Tipped yeah. underneath. That was a bad a angle to go off the glass because she wasn't straight forward and she didn't have the corner bank angle, so she should have went just tried to go to flush it. That was a bad angle for the bank. I think Watkins was wary of the rim protectors mm -hmm. there. Yes. For Central Maine, Watkins only stands 5'7". Yeah. So now a foul on the rebound, so that will send Belay to the line. Fresh legs two. about to come in for Central Maine. Three, three new three players, people. yeah. yeah. Yet again, mass <laughs> substitutions for this team. Yes. Plays first is good. 18-point game now, and Yanez will sit. They're going to need a quick shot. Penn State Lehigh is going to need a quick shot. And keep Because they have a little momentum building. They, they play this right. They can make this interesting. 
Second no good to Blondie and Peterson back in for Central Maine. Banks open with an open Banks. look. Too short. short. Nah, geez. Long rebound. Good Sanders. rebound. Nice wow, Sanders with great hustle. Here's Taylor, now Watkins, and she was fouled. She's getting fouled a lot, and they're giving her easy looks. I honestly don't like the fact that they're fouling that much. You don't want to let Watkins see the ball go through the net that much because it adds to the shooter's confidence, and you don't want to give easy shots when the other team's down. She's now 5 of 8 from the line, and she yeah. started off 0 for 3. Oh, she just missed right it. on cue, 5 <laughs> for 9. I'm sorry I jinxed her. I feel bad. <laughs> the old broadcaster <laughs> jinx. <laughs> Harrington checks back in. Belay will sit. It's an 18-point game, 2.31 to go in this women's D2 final. That was a good – she made the second one. 17-point game. Taylor is really – I really like Taylor. I think she has a lot of potential. She's really shown a lot of – Banks steal with by steal. Banks. Swatted it out of the, the hands of a blondie. Steal. Up ahead for Watkins. One on two. Pulls up. Yeah. Rims out from 12. Now that was a bank angle. That was that was a right corner bank angle. She didn't shoot it. Now Watkins is more of a driver yeah. as DeCourcy is fouled and will go to the line for two. Both teams in the penalty. Uh, Watkins uh, is much more of a driver and yes. a slasher than she is a shooter. Which I'm impressed at her size. Mm -hmm. yeah, if she added a little bit of a mid-range shot to her game, I know she's the player of the year, but she could, she could add she a could lot. She could be even better. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of growth available for her. 32% from deep, too, but yeah. hasn't made a three in this game and doesn't yeah. take a ton of threes yeah. as is. DeCourcy in and out on the first free throw. It's the second, so it's an 18-point game again, 2.12 to go in the fourth. they got to move the ball quickly. Banks was up ahead of the pack, and now the officials kind of will blow it dead. Yeah, kind of build out central main there because yeah. Banks getting an open look is exactly what Lehigh wants right now. Yeah, Banks is the one, especially with the three-point threat. She's the one bona fide three-point threat yes. on this team. Yes. Here's Taylor as we come up on two to play in the ball game. Watkins, Watkins works right, and finds for Banks. Too yeah. short that time. You can see it as soon as it left her hand. Two straight shots that are short. Her legs might be dying. I mean, she's been in this game, this last quarter the whole time. Also heavily contested too, which yes. doesn't help. Yes. Now a blondie fouled, and she will go to the line. Yeah, it's a bad time to be fouling when you're only at ten. Two minutes left and you're down 18. But not much else to do at this point. Got to go for steals aggressively. Down yes. 18, 152 to go in uh, the fourth. And Lehigh Valley will say this much. They are absolutely fighting to the end. There's yes. no quitting in them. And they've played the fourth quarter has been their best quarter. Yes. They've outscored right now. It was a 28-point game at the end of three. So yes, they've outscored them by 10. 10 points. Yeah. yeah, they've really shown a lot of heart. I really, really respect how hard they've been playing. It's a really... Even if they don't win, I know it's going to be hurt and they're going to be sad, but they can definitely leave knowing that they gave their all. And to be fair to Central Maine, they've at this point pulled really all of their starters for the last five minutes, and that makes a difference too. Yes, but yes it does. Lehigh Valley has continued to fight. It's Etsy in the game with it. Nice Ball's tipped and pass. stolen. Here's That's Watkins. four steals from Banks. He has really shown good awareness on the passing lanes. She's probably about to take this three, yeah. And she does. Yeah. Too strong that time. High it, rebound. It's goes really to hard to make threes when you're forcing it and you're not letting it flow naturally. But she does have 15 points, which is above her season average. Here's a three. A Blondie steps into it. Too strong. The Corsi can't finish wow, on the follow. Look at Here's Taylor. Taylor. Look at 5-2 coming away <laughs> yeah. with that board. Really fighting <laughs> for it. She wasn't letting anybody else get that ball. Banks on the Ooh. run. Nearly banked at home. Yeah. Banks banking it at home. There you go. Banks showing some determination <laughs> here too, yeah? Yes. The unintentional punt. <laughs> <laughs> 109 on the clock. Central Maine, the top seed. They will emerge victorious here and end the season on an 18-game winning streak. Yeah, I think Central Maine being a two-year program, these are big minutes for their freshmen. So they can You're right, yeah. play these girls and, and have them in championship minutes. 16-point game now, 109 to go. Inbound, nearly stolen. That yeah, was Soren that came rocketing in, but now Watkins has it. Great effort by Soren. Watkins tried to go to the Euro step, attacking from the left side, and it's a jump ball. Yeah, she doesn't have a left hand. So try to use the Euro step to get yeah. to her right. Yeah. As a defender, they, they I'm sure they've picked up on that. By now, by most way. likely, yeah. yeah. Wa 
Uh, it was a close call, but Taylor made a good effort going after the ball. So that will send the Blondie back to the line. Yeah. Taylor's had herself a nice game off the bench. 58.2 on the clock, 70-54. Yes. And it looks like Taylor only has three points, but she's, she's just been done. Active. Yeah. She's done more than three points. I mean, two points. She's been very active as a player. Three boards and two assists for yes. Taylor. She's done a good job moving the offense around and making good passes. And defensively, she's been very active. So she's done more than what the scoreboard says. The online stat sheet won't tell me, but probably has a couple of steals as well. Is Blondie yes. good on both? Here is Taylor. Central Maine no longer pressing. Yeah. Post up Sanders. It comes up short, hit the bottom of the backboard, but she'll go to the line for two. I find that so sad. Sanders has really good drop steps. She has really good feel inside. I'm, I kind of find it sad that they didn't go to her earlier. That first quarter was played at a very, very fast pace. Yes. It just seemed like every, or at least Central Maine, that's kind of what they want to do. Perhaps yeah. PSU Lehigh got a little bit away from their game plan. There. Yes, they should have slowed down the pace when they were on offense, at least, because you can force and control what you do on offense. At least in the half court. Yes, and yes. That they weren't able to do. Yeah. And she kind of got lost in the flow of the game, and yeah. she misses the seconds. And she was the, the catalyst last night as they took down Villa Maria in the semifinal. I mean, 24 points, 17 rebounds, and seven blocks is a lot of stats. Blondie, nice hop step, and she that hits for 12. That was a really good hop step. You, she, like, transported a couple feet to the <laughs> right. That was, was nice. was a pretty decent leap right there. <laughs> Went about three feet to her right. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was a good, that was a good move. Hey, it's illegal. Why not? Yeah. 35 on the clock. I really am hoping Lehigh keeps us under 20 points. They are 19 down right now. Let's see if they can. Sanders comes up short. They're five High up ball. on the board, Etsy and Sanders. Possession hour is for Lehigh, so if they elect to, this can be the final possession of the game, 25.9 on the clock. And Sanders is only a freshman, so this she can really grow to be a force because she has a lot of good natural gifts. Corsi bumped. Threw it off of Watkins as she fell out of bounds. Nope, they'll say she did not. Stepped on the end line instead. So it goes back to Lehigh Valley. Inside and Sanders. Sanders. And she lays hand. it home. Yeah. Already a second team All-American as a freshman. Yes. And plenty of room to grow, as yes. you said. 15 on the clock. And Central Maine does yeah, not have it. to take another shot. Yeah, yeah they'll hold it. Yeah. And the final score. We're down 17. Will be, yep, they kept it under 20. 74 to 57 will be your final. The final buzzer sounds, and that is it. Yeah. Central Maine Community College, the Mustangs are your 2017 Women's Division II USCAA National Champions. They were definitely the better team. Um, they were very well coached, and they just were so deep. They just seemed like they had, they had more talent today. But the Lehigh Valley... Lions showed a lot of heart. They brought a three, they cut in three team points in the fourth quarter. They have a lot of young talent. I don't see really any seniors on the starting lineup. This team, this team could be back here next year. And Sanders being so young, they have a lot of room to grow. And I, I really, you gotta respect the effort that they put out today. And anytime you bring back the reigning conference player of the year, that's usually a good sign. Yes. And they do that. Central Maine, of course, as a community college, it's a little bit different year to year. So many people come in and out. Yes. It's difficult to say what their future is. But for the time being, they won this one. And they end the season winning 18 in a row. They finished 33 and 1. Just a tremendous season for them. And it was fun to see them mob coach Andrew Morong, the, the coach of the year. <laughs> Literally an entire gaggle encircled him after the final buzzer sounded as he they a, celebrated with him. He is a very good coach. That team, this team passes the ball really well, doesn't really play out of control, and plays really good team defense and offense, and that is coaching. And he really showed how good of a coach he was today. It was very impressive. Now, this is a team that definitely plays to their strengths. Yes. If you look at them, they're very deep, so okay. they might as well play very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And that's what they do, force a lot of turnovers. And they ended up forcing 31 turnovers. Wow. They turned it over themselves 22 times, yes. which is very, very high. But yes. you force 31, you're going <laughs> to win a lot of games. And yes. they won a game by 17 where they only shot 33.8%. Yeah, the ball was not yeah. falling from three. For either team, really, no, yeah. No. 
but they were able to get it done on the strength of those turnovers and a plus eight rebound advantage it looks as like well. Leo Sh uh, Jenny Schlum is going to be the first team who's in the playoff. Yeah, I believe this is the, right now they're doing the, the postseason award, so this yes. is probably naming the, the all-tournament teams. She was very impressive. She was a very good passer. Defensively, she has a high basketball IQ, and she has a lot of good moves to score. I think she had 20 points, yeah, correct? Yeah, she did. She had a game-high 20. 20 points. I mean, she was, she was very impressive today. She was fun to watch. It was yeah. enjoyable. Schlin definitely has some games, some nice moves, yes. and it's pretty big too at six feet. It'll be interesting. Yeah. She is, she's a sophomore, so she'll be done at this place, at, yes. at this community college. It'll be interesting to see where she chooses to continue her career going forward. Yeah, yes. So she has the ability to play at a, at a D3 or D2 college, certainly. Yeah. She was looking Look what good. she's jumped. Yeah. Looks like Ashley Gordon Ashley. also. Yep thrown on for PSUE High Valley to the all tourney team. Watkins was just announced before that. Sanders will likely follow too yep. for Lehigh Valley as their triumvirate of all Americans. Gordon had a bit of a rough game here today. Finished with just two points. Yeah, she did play out of control a little bit, but she definitely made a lot of, she had, her effort was it. She definitely was a very strong effort. Can't take anything away from her. Yeah, she competed hard, but yeah. this was not her day. Brooke Reynolds, also on the all-tournament team, went for 13-12, and 12, so had a double-double. This girl is everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> hit a little bit of everything again. I can't see the steals total right now, it but had probably to be high. five, six steals. Yes. She had two blocks at the half. Did a little bit of everything, a stat sheet stuffer. Yes. Reynolds and Bla Bliles, high basketball IQ, very evident. Yeah, a couple of guys out there, certainly, in yeah. Central Maine. Let me try to get the tally right here. How many did they play? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, that's, that's wrong. It's got to be more than that. 1, 2, three, yeah, They played four. number three. Yeah, she's there. Yeah. It's got to be. If Penn State played. Ooh, 14 players. It's 10. No, I think it was. I'm trying to count it. Let's see. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12 6, deep 7, 8, 9, 10, that's crazy. 11, 14 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 they won. <laughs> thought it might have been more than that, to be honest, at first. Wow. <laughs> but you can only dress 15. I mean. Everybody played, and everybody played a decent amount of minutes. There was nobody who was out there just for a, a token runaround, if you will. Tremendously yeah. impressive how deep they go. That's another example of the head coach taking good advantage of what he has. And that's something that he really does, shows a good job of. He doesn't force any system upon a team that doesn't have the skill to do that system. He goes by the skill of his players, and he, he did a great job today. And he built his system around the skill sets that yes. he has and did a tremendous job, as you see his girls out there right now. So the final score for the final time, 74-257, Central Maine is the Division II Women's Champion. We have one more final to come. That will be the men's D2 finally versus Penn State York and uh, Berkeley College. Berkeley undefeated and going for their 53rd win in a row and a three-peat, so that'll be one that you don't want to miss. Yeah. Final score in this Big one again, 74-57. to 57. For Jason Collins, I'm Ricky Sobrano. We'll leave you with the images of the trophy presentation.